let's talk about a U sub problem that sometimes is overlooked. U sub is usually used if you have a break in the chain problem uh, or trying to undo a chain rule with whether you know it or not. You have a function within a function. But a also a very common use of U sub is when you have what's called an unfortunate sum problem. Now, here's what I mean. This guy. <clears throat> is it okay to split this into two separate fractions if the sum is in the denominator? No, that's 100% not true. That's a violation of a rule of math. The sum in the denominator cannot be split. That said, we need to do something. Well, that's where u sub comes in. Let u equal, what should we let u equal? What do you reckon? X plus 1. Now, that'll be great because then, Instead of a sum in the denominator, we'll have a single term, and that's good. And we then need to figure out all the other dominoes that fall because of that. Uh, x squared, well, let's start by saying x is u minus 1, okay? So what's x squared? And actually do square it out, please. u squared minus 2u plus 1. The only other thing we also need is dx. dx is straight up to u, please. So a substitution, the denominator becomes u. The numerator becomes u squared minus 2u plus 1. And the du, the dx is the du. Now, we still have a fraction with a sum. But now the sum is in the numerator. So now can we split it up? Yes, that can be split. What's u squared over u? What's 2u over negative 2u over u? Negative 2 or what's 1 over u? 1 over u. Wonderful. Now we can integrate. What's the antiderivative of u? 1 half u squared. Antiderivative of negative 2. What's the antiderivative of 1 over u? That's a lot of the absolute value of u. Yay? Am I done? No, and then I need to plug it back in. So 1 half x plus 1 quantity squared minus 2 times the quantity x plus 1 plus log the absolute value of x plus 1. And boom, we're done. Are we cool? All right. So if you get a sum in the wrong place, then you can help yourself by the same thought process. Try the second one. You have an unfortunate sum because I definitely don't want to take x plus 1 to the 50th power. You understand? That's not. So if you can help yourself by changing where that sum is, that's the key. You know that when you do a definite integral, you also change the limits. This could be really good. This can be really good. I imagine I'm going to be getting you a 50 second power and even a 50 second record. Sure. Anyway. 
Yeah, I'm gonna take it. In this case, the sum was in with the exponent, and we couldn't distribute. But if you switchy switch, then the exponent is a single term. Does that make a mistake? To what? Up here? What's that to? Oh, I sure did. Got it. I got you. Wow. Now that's going to be really out of control large, I believe. No, we need to think. That's what we need to do. We need to just think a little bit. Maybe it would be better to... Nope, it's still going to be ugly. Never mind. No, it'll be... Nope, it's still going to be ugly. What if we took out a 2 to the 50 first? Does that help? Nope, still ugly. All right, this is not coming out great, but my point is made. Let's stop there, shall we? Yeah. All righty then. Um, cool, Yusuf, check. Now, let's talk about taking arc sine and arc tan. All right, there are two inverse periods. I expect you to have down cold memory. You don't have them down already? You best get them down right fast. Arc sine, <coughs> the derivative of arc sine is 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared. Therefore, if you were to take the antiderivative of 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared, you're talking arc sine. If you see 1 over 1 plus u squared, then that is actually arc tangent. So, if you get change forms of these, things start to get a little complicated, gradually getting harder. So the first one, is that arc sine or arc tangent? Arc tangent. What can I do with the 2 up front, up top? So this is just 2, arc tangent of x plus c. Now, you might think I don't see a big deal, but take my word for it, it'll get much harder. So, let's go here. What is that? Arc sine or arc tangent? It's got a root and a subtraction. That's arc sine. What about the negative out top? Leave it out there. Negative 5 arc tangent sine, rather, dum -dum, arc sine of x. Negative root 3 over 2 to 1 half. That's negative 5 times. What's the arc sine of 1 half? That's at what angle is sine one half? Five or six. Minus five times arc sine of negative root three over two. At what angle is sine root three over two? Negative pi over three. So I get something like negative five pi over six plus what, 5 pi over 3, which is 10 pi over 6. If I have I turn for my final answer, yes. 5 pi over 6 positive. So far so good? Okay. Now, if you see something besides a 1 there, then your life gets hard. Okay? Now, I'm going to talk about tweaking this a little. This guy is not quite arc sine or arc tangent. What is it like, arc sine or arc tangent? Yeah. Arc tangent, yeah? Uh, right? Yeah. It's the sum without the root. But the problem is the 4. So we should focus on how do we solve the 4 problem. Uh, you will definitely want to make this 1. Okay? Now we can factor out a 4. But if we do that, to make that 1, there's a consequence. You have to factor out a 4 for both of those terms. And so the 
other guy becomes x squared over 4. You follow? Now, the deal is then that we're talking a little bit of u sub. I want this to be 1 over 1 plus u squared. As you want, yeah? So, it seems like we want u squared to equal x squared over 4. So I'm going to do a u squared sum. u squared is x squared over 4. What does that mean u is? Find u squared. Find u squared. Now find u. u is x over 2. Find du. du is 1 half dx. Now find dx. dx is 2 du. Now then, with all our substitutions, that fourth that we factored out, it did not go away. It's still there. Okay? The 1 up top is still 1. x squared over 4, or the other one is 1. x squared over 4 gets subbed with u squared. You follow? And dx is 2 to you, see? Now the 2 and the 4 surely become a half. And now the inside is all pretty simple. So it's the inside derivative of 1 over 1 plus u squared. Of sine or tangent? Of tangent of u plus c. And finally we sub back 1 half our tangent of what is u? Is it x squared over 4 or just x over 2? x over 2. Okay. Now, uh, let's try a similar idea. That next one, it's like our sine or our tangent? Our tangent, okay. The problem, though, is that 4. Now, I'm going to factor out, but this time I'm not factoring out a 4 from the denominator. I'm factoring out a root 4. And so, if I factor out... A root 4, that really means a 2. You follow? Are you with me? Okay. Now then, if I factor out a 4 from both of those, that makes this x squared over 4 in the root. <laughs> so after I do a little factoring to make the basic R of sine idea, which has a 1 in it, then I'm there, and I should have dx. You follow? That's where we make our substitution. u squared is? We want u squared to be right there. So u squared is x squared over 4, which means u is x over 2, which means du is? One half dx, so dx is two du. This is a definite integral, so we also have to change the limits. When x is zero, u is zero. When x is one, u is one half. Now, with all those facts going in. Our problem then changes to 1 half, the <laughs> integral from not 0 to 1 anymore, but 0 to 1 half, 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared, which is the blueprint, that's what we want, and then dx is 2 du, right? Now that said, uh, 2 and a half Garners. And so the antiderivative, what is the antiderivative of 1 over root 1 minus u squared? R of sine of u from 0 to 1 half. Do I sub back in a definite integral? I change those limits to fit u, so I do not sub back. Now I plug those in for u. Those are u values, so they work with u. I don't sub back in a definite integral. 
So what is arc sine of a half? Pi over 6. And what is arc sine of 0? Zero. 0. And so my answer then is pi over 6. Okay? All right. Um, let's try... I feel like I should have one version of... Uh, that's right. Okay, so uh, let's go to this one. It's a pretty crazy. But it does have an arc sine or arc tangent field. Which one? Arc sine. It's the root with the subtraction. Okay? So we're going to shoot for this. You might be thinking, well, that, yeah, that's a pop. That's not one. Is that a problem? We'll talk about that in a second. But um, let's go here. I, this one is already made, so at least I don't have to do that factoring thing like I did here when there was a 4 there and a 4 there. So that part I don't have to do. But I do have to choose my u squared well. It looks like u squared wants to be e to the 2x. Let's rewrite that. What's another way to think of e to the 2x? e to the x squared. So if u squared is e to the 2x, then u squared is e to the x squared, which means u is e to the x, which means du is e to the x dx. Now with our substitution, <coughs> the bottom then, e to the 2, 1 minus e to the 2x becomes 1 minus u squared. The top, e to the x dx, that all gets replaced with du. That's wonderful. That's a clean antiderivative. What's the antiderivative? Arc tangent or sine? Arc sine of u plus c. And do I sub back or not? I do. Arc sine of e to the x. We? <coughs> okay. Now then, um, try, try, this one I want you to change. Okay, I found a sound for this, shouldn't I? Okay, so change this one to 1 over 4 plus 9 x squared for the purposes of it fitting my sound. Are you ready? Yes? So you're changing the last one, the 5 over 3 plus 2 x squared. You have that problem? Change it to 1 over 4 plus 9 x <laughs> Classic problem. All right, so here we go. Maybe. This worked earlier. Okay, there we go. You don't have to wait for the music to guide you, although it will guide you. Integrate this function. Break out the big guns. Got two different constants. When I asked for a part, you're the weirdest elf I've ever met. But you can bet before we're through, Mr. I'll make our ten out of you. Okay, here we go.
want to make a, tri a calculus song, you could probably throw a little extra credit your way. One six, our tangent of three halves x plus c. Oh. All right. Now you really do need to practice this a little bit without a song, so try those two, please. What? something like 2 6 times 12, so pi over 30. Cool. <laughs> While you're working on that second one, I'll remind you of the, of the weirdness of this problem, especially for somebody who's maybe not seen this, if you imagine a multiple choice question on this, you're looking at that term, there's not a width of trig in it, can you imagine how nobody would ever choose pi over 30? Where are they getting pi over 30? There's nothing about trig in that original problem. You could see somebody who hadn't seen this before would never bite off an answer, yet there is a trig component into this that's really hidden. Uh, all these sideways, all these are really sideways shapes. Right? Oh, is yours not, is yours different? What's yours say? X. This should be X, yes. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So. so I, X starts by saying, all right, which one am I shooting for? Put the basic blueprint down and say, all right, what's your square? So what's your square here? X to the fourth. X to the fourth. If U squared is X to the fourth, what's U? So it's B, 2x dx. So what is x dx, which is what I have, and half to you. Yeah. 
So you're getting something like one half arc sine of u, which is. Okay. Now this requires a little bit of practice. Um, and so we're going to have to practice this hard if you're going to see this on a test on Friday, which you will. So, okay. If you're really lost, come in seventh period. We can practice it. Now that you practice this, you know I've got five of these in this part of the book. But it does take somewhere the magic number is between five and ten to keep this stuff going. Yeah, I got it. All right. So um, that's it. Questions on sixty uh, something or other? Sixty-six. Sixty-six questions. So we've got this downward opening wide parabola. We kind of make this triangle in it. The equation of the parabola is 12y equals. 36 minus x squared, that's, I don't know why they wrote it that way, but y is negative 1 12 x squared plus 3, so that seems reasonable, it's wide opening down, y intercept of 3, okay, I'm cool. Alright, so then, express the area in terms of x, the triangle area. Uh, Start with the basic triangle, base times height divided by 2, yeah? What's the base? Let's go here is the base. So what do you say? It's There's lots of possibilities. So is it, it's not a known quantity, it's lots of different possibilities, right? But in all cases, the base is? What do you say? Yeah, what sideways distance? X, yeah? So in this case, the base is x on both sides, or 2x. The height is here, no matter where the triangle looks like. So the height is y, yeah? If the 2 is going away, the area of this triangle is just whatever the x is times the y. Now that's two variables, and they say in terms of x only, so what do I put in for y? Well, that's where the idea of the parabola comes in. They've got to use it sometime in the fact that the, parab the points x's and y's are points on the parabola. That's what allows us to substitute them. So I would say distributed that the area equation is negative 1 12 x cubed plus 3x. We? Okay. Now then, if in part b they want the maximum possible area, max area is where a prime goes positive to negative. So a prime is negative one fourth x squared plus three. To find the critical numbers. There's no DNE point, it's a parabola, so there's no undefined point. So something like that, which means three equals one fourth x squared, which means x squared is twelve. So I'm feeling x uh, plus or minus, but let's just go to positive square root of 12 or 2 root 3. We? Mentally or on paper, make sure it's a positive to negative case. If you had a small x, like 0, a prime would be positive. But if you had a really large x, like a billion, 3 minus a billion, 
of the negative. So it does feel like 8 times 20 positive is negative. So I do have max. Now the only question is what form of the question do they want? They want the greatest possible area of the triangle. So now we need to find the area with an x of 2 root 3. That means plugging that into that equation, negative 1 12 of 2 root 3 cubed plus 3 times 2 root 3 in finding the other. Root three plus six root three. I'm going to narrow it forward. Cool. Uh, seven. Seven still a question. Okay. Okie dokie. Um, seven. Set this cube. General possible shape for which we know. It kind of depends on where they cut it off. positive cube could look like this or like this, but depending on where they put the endpoints, you know, the maximum could be a lot of different places. For example, if they put the endpoints there and there, then the maximum there might be the endpoint. But if they put the endpoints there and there, well, then the maximum there might be the critical. So. We're looking at the possible candidates for critical numbers or endpoints in our home of possibility. Uh, the interval is, in this case, negative two to three. So, did you start with the EDT, or an extreme value theorem? Absolute extrema must be at endpoints are critical numbers. Okay? Endpoints are given, critical numbers need to be found. Critical numbers are the derivative. Zero or undefined. There's no undefined here on a cube. There's no sharp turns or anything like that. No funny business. If you did the algebra correctly, you probably pulled out a six and then factored. And did you get critical numbers of two and negative one? Oui. All right. Now both of those candidates are inside the region, so they are viable candidates. If one is outside the region, we would go. So let's go with each version of each candidate. F at each candidate. Or what's the y value at each of the possibilities? At negative 2, I get 2 times negative 8 minus 3 times 4 plus 24 plus 7. Or negative 16 minus 12 is negative 28. Negative 4, 3. I get 3. F at, uh, let's go negative 1 is the next one I come to. That's uh, negative 2 minus Good 3 morning, minus 12 plus 7. 18 minus 5 is 4. Uh,
All right, forgot to hole punch those.
Should have at the very minimum the first part use the distance, a rate distance time formula. So you should be working with rate as distance over time. I believe it said FIC in the, pro in the box, yes? Yeah? Yes. Okay, so rate is distance over time, <coughs> so the rate is seven miles per hour. So the second part, you could either do a multiplier or a formula. The formula would be how far did it go in as far as distance? Distance is rate times time. If I put in 7 miles per hour for the rate, 14 hours for the time, you would travel a 98 mile distance. Okay? Okay. Um, 3, same deal, FFC, the rate, the first rate is distance over time, which is 8 miles per hour. The second rate is distance over time, that's 6 miles per hour. How much faster than the difference is 2 miles per hour. You needed FFC, FFC, and the difference. Four was a bit funky. If you had three different parts of your trip and you wanted the average rate, you could not average the average rate. Instead, you needed to find total distance. The total distance was 40 miles, 60 miles, and 40 miles. Total time is 5 hours, 10 hours, 20 hours. Altogether then, 140 miles in 35 hours means the overall average rate of 6 miles per hour. You did have to have units. Um, a, 18, 25th, uh, A, B is 72%, C is 0.6, and D is 60%. Six, I think we did in class. Circumference is D pi. What is pi again? Pi. Um, So close, but not radii. Diameter. diameter, right. Pi is the number of diameter it takes to go around a circle. Excellent. Okay, number seven. For, for all the following problems, you should have had translation algebra to the answer. So for all, check your work. You should have 700 for seven. 54 35ths or 119 35ths for 8. 
Nine is zero point eight three with a rep of ten over the three. Zero point five eight three. Ten is twenty seven twentieths or one and seven twentieths. Eleven is twenty one fourths or five and a fourth. Twelve volume. You should have three seven things rather. FSC for the volume. FSE for the area of the base. So you should have three steps for area of the base, three steps for volume, and the answer is 2,418 feet. So if you are missing any of those components, mark it down. Number 13, 1% is 0 0.53, 25% 20, is 1.325. 14, 8,000 square kilometers to convert area, you need to convert both dimensions to meters, so you should have a unit multiplier with meters on top, kilometers on bottom, and then another with meters on top, kilometers on bottom. But also check, did you write the answer in scientific notation? Because it said you were supposed to. Eight times 10 to the ninth meters squared. If you didn't use scientific notation, mark it wrong. If you forgot the unit, mark it wrong. Moving on. This is a cross product problem. So first, check that you have that kind of works. You have 316x equals 3 fifths times 8 over 1. Then did you use algebra, the other reciprocal, on both sides to get x by itself? And then did you get x as 128 fifths? Okay. Same deal on 16. I believe you're cross multiplying. And then algebra, x is 25 70 seconds. 17, you're using good algebra. x is 25 14. 18, P is 10 sevenths, or 1 and 3 sevenths. 19, it's order of operation. You should be working down the whole time. If you work sideways at any point, mark it wrong. Unless you, unless, for whatever reason, it was really long and you had to, you ran in a room at the bottom of the box, then I would take you going off to the side. But only if you ran out of room. Otherwise, it's long if you went sideways. 20, same deal, you should be working down to 24. 21, you should be working down, never sideways, to 85 twelfths. 22, working down to 13 and 2 sevenths, never sideways, not even for the answer. 23, 11.1924. 24, 2,598.497. 25 was a humdinger. You had to divide a lot before you saw a repeating pattern. You might have had to go over one more line because it was such a long division problem. Back sideways is good to turn the boxes so you have more room. So 2,602.142857. The rep of 10 is over all six digits. 142857. Uh, if you rounded it, it is wrong. It did not say round. Okay, uh, 26, order of operations. If you fail to write the whole problem, then mark it wrong. If you, for example, didn't write 415 until later, it's wrong. That is garbage math. I did not teach you to write little nibbles here and there. That is bad math. If you write the whole problem, working down, I ran out of room, so I wrote my final answer next to, but preferably, you work down the whole time. 27, 548. 28, 38, third. 29. Uh, you got three points there. Negative 2, negative 1. Negative 4, 2. And 2, 0. And 30 is 8. How many minutes? Put that number at the top of the top. And.
The lesson is solving two step equations. Yay! One step equations, do not doubt masters. So it's about to say that two step equations. There we go. Are you ready? Yes. Yes, we're going to have to start. Uh, uh, this should hopefully go pretty well. Nope. You actually need to go. Okay. All right, here we go. Uh, would you please draw this picture? It is a scale, a balance. Two things are in balance. The right side and the left side. They have perfect weight. So that the scale is not tipping one side either way. It just finds the weight perfectly equal. On the left side, place inside those same mystery boxes are little kittens with mystery weight. All three the same weight. I know. I like okay. Why not? Wait, 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 I'm, of course, the minute they move, the scale might tip. So. They're dead here. What? What? So, if they move, the scale is messed up. So we have Five pounds. But also the boxes have to weigh something. No, they don't. Uh, it's considered like it's real life, but it's not. Consider all the material of the boxes are inside is exactly the same. It's air. It's air. So like fake box, but there's actually like it's a box. That makes no sense. No, all right. Think of that. We're going so far. Now, surely on the homework we will not be drawing this picture every time there is. The odds so we will be on our right. Okay. So, the idea is, what is the magic mystery weight of the dead cat? Ten! Oh, goodness. Raise your hand, please. Okay. Ten pounds. Ten pounds is good. Uh, Avery, how did you do over here ten? How did you do it? Okay. All right. Perfect. Okay. Now that what she said, uh, use it or not, it is exactly the same thing we'll do with algebra. You have it down, ready for step B. Same problem with algebra. And she had to do two steps to solve that equation. She had to subtract the five and then divide it into three parts. That's two steps. That's why it's a two-step equation. Can you write a mathematical equation to show the balance, please? This side, what's the total weight of the left side? That's the right side. The left side, what's the total weight of the left side? And that's the right side. Yes. 3x plus 5. The total weight of the left is 3x plus 5. And that equals, because it's in balance, 35 pounds. Now, that is the new type of equation today. And with whole numbers, it usually goes really well. It's with fractions and things that are new. But we'll go back to that. Now, I know in order of operations, we typically do multiplication before addition, right? But here, we're undoing. So the order of operations is exactly reversed. The first thing we do is get rid of the 5. How do you get rid of it? in an algebraic way, that five. 
Divide by five or subtract five? Subtract five. Yeah, to get rid of adding five and subtract five. We show that below the equation. We draw a big old line to total up and show our new equation. And on the left-hand side is 3x. 3x. Put the balance directly below the equal sign. You put another equal sign. Not off to the side. Not over to a diagonal. Directly below. Working down. 3x is? 30. Now that was one step. We still have work to do to get x by itself. How do we get rid of the 3 to get x by itself? Divide. And where do we show that? Right there? Underneath. Underneath. Whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. Divide or draw the line to show here's a new equation coming. Bring down the equal sign perfectly below. X is? And I guess 10. That makes sense because 3 tenths plus 5 would be 3 5. Yes? All right, now then, doing one of these problems with whole numbers without the um, picture. 2x plus 1 equals 7. That's a two-step equation. After we write the problem, after we write the problem, 2x plus 1 equals 7, which you probably just wrote, then what do we get rid of first? Do we get rid of the two or the one first? The one. The one. And how do I get rid of that one? Subtract, Subtract one. And where do I write that subtracted one? Near it or below it, did you say? You said under it. Under it. Oh, super. Okay, sorry. I'm a little bit of a deafie. So if you subtract one from both sides, you get 2x equals 6. <laughs> now, what do we do to get x by itself? Blessing? Divide by 2, showing that in the proper algebraic way, algebraic way, which is below dividing both sides by 2. That's the division rule, as long as we do it to both sides. And, then, and working down, never across. So your work should be off to the side here. Hey, that's 3. No, down, down, down. working down. X equals 3. Okay? All right. See the... Equal signs all line up. All right, now what makes this a lot harder is if you have fractions to do. Can you go back to like a quick ten second? Uh, Wait, maybe Nathan. Yeah, for a whole ten okay. seconds. Here we go. He doesn't. So here's the equation. These are going to get a little gross. You have to do this really clean and organized. Yeah, thanks. So easy to work out. Oh, did. Did. Did easy one? Now we're here. Boom. Okay? Alright, not over several days, like over a couple of minutes. Okay, what am I going to move first? The three-fourths or the two and one-fifth? Okay, could you write yourself a note to move the two and one-fifth? We'll need a common denominator, yeah? Yeah. So, rather than do that later, let's rewrite the problem now with that common denominator. What is the common denominator between fifths and halves? Tenths. So minus two and a fifth becomes minus two and two tenths. And three and a half becomes three and five tenths. Now when I go to move stuff in my algebra. I wouldn't have to go off to the side and do scratch work. It'll be all set up in my equation. I'll get 3 fourths x equals what? Question. Add. Oh, 5 and 7 tenths, sorry. 5 and 7 tenths. You're all taped out. Obviously. Okay. Now, the next step, step two, to multiply or divide, we have to have improper fractions. Improper fractions are needed. So again, rewrite. 3 fourths x is fine, but the other side, 5 and 7 tenths, needs to be changed too. 57 tenths. Now, we're ready to solve for x using good algebra. What do I do to get x by itself? Divide by 3 fourths, which means multiply by the reciprocal next to. 
That's it. Does anything cross cancel? Yes. Four and ten. Four and ten. And two goes into both of those. What else? Three and fifty-seven. Three and fifty-seven. One and nineteen. Okay. So all together. Do we have a number? Nineteen times two in the numerator. Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight over. Okay, it's a beautiful copper. All right, that's the ugly style. A lot of places can make a mistake, but if you'll just take the time to rewrite to make the next step go well, by looking ahead, everything will go fine. Yes? What? Yes, you must be practice. There's no way you're going to get good at this without practice. Okay, tell me what I'm doing. Okay, would you do these two practice problems showing good algebra? Like after one step, two thirds x equals four six, mm -hmm. or two thirds. Did you reduce four six, or just wait till later? Okay, you reduce first, and then use the reciprocal. All right, so if you use the reciprocal, then you get two thirds times three halves. So x is. Yes. You need to reduce. Okay. Uh, this one, I hope you would again do a rewrite step to go to make the subtraction over. Right? Something like that, yeah? Then get rid of the two and a half, you'll need to go. Be proper, right? Example B. Okay, we'll see. Does it look also look ordinal like that? Here's your test. For the most part, they were good. Not everybody did the best they could do for the partner because you wrote it a little different or what? So, um, your corrections. When you're done, you can check them at the front table and turn them in and get the problem set. Please try and get the on the paper as well as possible. If you don't have room, then use the sticky. Thank you. 
Yes. On your sheet, you don't have a, a Venn diagram either. Do, 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 do.
syllabus and all the pre-algebra teachers do this is if you have no missing assignments, no missing problem sets at the end of the semester, you can drop a hundred points of test, whether it be one hundred point test or two fifty point test. If you also have no other missing assignments, like no missing GPA, no test corrections, then you can drop another hundred points. Um, like again, that. whether it be a fifty point, two fifties or Okay, so that will help you quite a bit because it'll drop those days where you had a bad day. You know, you had a bad day. You had a bad Thank you. 
Just ignores because she just does the math.
They said to me, and I just put it up to oh. over the three or call it a fraction Right, the rate is speed is the rate. Speed is the right distance. Sure. 